Hello, good morning. It's uh, Adil Fazal here, market analyst at CFDs.com, bringing you a review of the European markets for the uh, 8th of uh, December 2015. Okay, so um, in terms of uh, the markets themselves this morning, it's been a total risk off trade uh, so far. Uh, ever since the FTSE broke um, uh, below the 6195 level, uh, which was a key uh, pivotal support zone. This video is being brought to you by CFDs.com. Uh, please visit www.cfds.com for your trading needs. Alternatively, you can visit the educational website, which is www.cfds.education. Okay, in terms of the Asian markets, first of all, the, uh, the Shanghai, the Nikkei, and the Hang Seng were down uh, almost 1%. Uh, the Hang Shanghai was down substantially more, one point. 9% and that was mainly due to the commodity route uh, ever since uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Or should we say OPEC failed to uh, uh, agree to a potential uh, uh, obviously uh, ceiling uh, initially there was a ceiling but then it was negated and denied so the uh, the oil crop remains and therefore oil prices have made a new low uh, overnight so we had a low of $37 we have subsequently rallied since then Okay, and uh, the market certainly seems to be under pressure regardless. Now, not only are the oil stocks in, in, into um, into uh, uh, a we or experience immense weakness, we also are seeing miners experiencing immense weakness today too. Now, we have the uh, likes of Anglo-American who have uh, actually scrapped their dividend, and that certainly has sent the stock down quite substantially. Hence the reason why the FTSE 100 certainly has broken lower. Uh, now, this was news that uh, came out later on uh, and obviously has triggered the actual sell-off itself now we are seeing some stabilization in copper and oil ever since oil held a 37 low level it hasn't made a new low copper is certainly holding the 204 level and the price of gold certainly is potentially holding that 1070 level or 1070 level so certainly some uh, some support uh, seen uh, uh, in the interim now in regards to the uh, european markets as we know mr draghi gave his uh, new york speech ever since then he reiterated the uh, uh, QE and unlimited QE and he would do whatever it takes etc etc and that obviously has caused the euro to uh, fall uh, back down to the 1.08 level uh, which obviously has sent uh, European equities higher now the, it's, uh, it certainly is is is, is is well, basically needs to be observed whether or not that that uh, that QE put can uh, or Draghi put can certainly continue to to send uh, the markets higher now like I said it's a commodity route uh, but nevertheless, from my perspective, European equities and, 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 and the Nasdaq especially should certainly enjoy a, a move higher uh, and uh, a rally should continue. Now, we have had weaker Chinese data overnight as well. That certainly is a concern. We've had weaker retail sales out of the UK. So again, that is a concern as well. Obviously, Chinese data itself, the import and export data and the trade data. Although having said that, the uh, imports certainly were stronger than expected, uh, but the uh, export data certainly missed expectations. So. Again, a negative bias on the market. Now, in terms of European economic data this morning, let's just re um, uh, recap that. Obviously, we've had weaker UK industrial production data. Um, sorry, industrial production data came out stronger. It was the manufacturing production data that came out weaker. We've had GDP, European GDP come out in line, which is fine. So no real uh, concerns there. Uh, and also with regards to the export side of things, the uh, French export data certainly came out uh, slightly stronger overall. So again, um, a mixed set of results there, okay. Uh, obviously, you have the uh, the commodities really causing the major weakness in this market. Now, it's it, the, the war at present in terms of equities is a weakness in commodities versus QE. That basically is the uh, summation. Now, in theory, QE should help commodities because obviously it creates inflation and it creates artificial demand and money flow, etc., towards the commodities and safe haven bid. But that obviously isn't occurring at present. Also, with regards to the euro, if you're touching the 1.08. 20 level i think if i recollect overnight we had a pivot low sorry 1.0840 level and you are seeing a potential hns formation uh, on the uh, euro usd so again that should help european equities obviously to push higher so again watch out for this potential pattern lower and obviously with the 1.0830 level and the 1.08 level coming back into contention and that should send european equities higher as well but again it's all about commodity weakness and that certainly see it remains a theme it's whether you go ahead with the Draghi put, i.e. QE, or you go with the commodity weakness. And that certainly seems to be the battle that's being played at present. Okay, let's bring up the FTSE 100 uh, first of all, because it's all about commodity weakness. Uh, the weekly chart certainly again is starting to turn a week. 
the daily chart, you can see that we are into that Fib 75%. That will be absolutely crucial. If that fails, then you are going to test the uh, 6100 level on the FTSE 100. So that, again, certainly needs to be observed. The 10-minute chart has just about breached support. We did have a, a potential reversal uh, on hand until, obviously, it's news with regards to uh, Anglo-American, and that certainly has sent the... Uh, the actual uh, index even lower so we are obviously into a potential new low on the FTSE itself the 60 minute chart on the FTSE we uh, now are coming into potential horizontal support our previous resistance equals support at this 6170 level which again coincides with the fib support if that 6170 fails to hold then obviously you are looking at 6100 so you are looking at quite a substantial drop on the uh, FTSE itself so this has yet to be seen whether or not this market will continue its free fall so again the FTSE 100 is the weakest link in Europe and that's due to commodities now euro stocks itself we did have uh, the euro stocks fall back onto gap fill support we had a, 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 a nice little bounce again fail to really materialize and continue and we are going back and testing the lows again so again that's going to be interesting if my stop remains at 3308 if that breaks then you are looking at 3300 potential support and that's where certainly an area that I'll go long based on the draggy put 60 minute chart we did have a bullish engulfing candle that fails obviously that has failed uh, towards the close and we are now got a testing this uh, key support again at the 3320 level on the uh, on the euro stocks and again the drug you put should sway the markets high that's my uh, all expectations at present especially on the daily chart you can see here we put a bottoming tail on the 4th of december and that certainly seems to be the low looking for a potential move higher again on euro stocks given the fact that we have this inverted head and shoulders formation on the larger time frame okay now looking at the french cac now you are looking at uh, weaker uh, uh, in the equities so thus far you can see that we have we closed the gap we had a rally and we failed to uh, continue uh, with that rally now again if this uh, support fails and we fail to move higher then you are looking at support again seen at the 4670 level but given the fact that mr draghi has done his speech and uh, it was uh, certainly pro qe it's very hard to see that being negated due to commodities okay so again that certainly needs to be observed and uh, kept a keen eye on now on the daily chart itself we have that pivot low on the fourth again which obviously was led by draghi etc and uh, damage control you can say and we'll see exactly how the market interacts and responds okay now the german dax let's bring up the german dax now the german dax ever since we have this pivot low on the fourth again that's quite important in terms of the german dax itself the 60 minute chart you can see now is coming into gap fill support obviously if we fail to hold this gap fill support and you are looking at the 10 6 30 low again which is very hard to envisage given the fact that we have mr draghi's speech the 10 minute chart is into gap fill support so again therefore you are looking at potential move higher on the german dax based on a weaker euro so you are back into the 180 1.0860 region on the euro usd and therefore that should act as resistance and send the uh, the german dax higher so again that certainly needs to be observed as well gap fill support on the german dax if you fail to hold this gap fill support then you are looking at uh, 10630 again but given like i said the draghi speech is very hard to envisage that uh, that being retested very very hard again the market is king the market will dictate and the market can do what it wants to do based on obviously uh, supply and demand so for now, the diagonal trend line certainly holds, uh, or diagonal, uh, or should we say the bearish channel certainly holds, and you are into gap fill support, so I am expecting a, a blip and a move higher from here. So again, this needs to be observed very carefully. Uh, that horizontal resistance certainly held at double top at 11,000. Ever since then, we've certainly seen weakness, but I am looking for further strength here now on the German DAX. Okay, I think that's a summation of uh, European indices in terms of economic data for the rest of the day. Uh, nothing really other than red book and jolts. Uh, and GDP data, so that certainly is, will be or will uh, be the main focus. Uh, you are, you do have uh, the um, the actual uh, BOC governor talking. Other than that, nothing. No, the Fed governor, uh, just uh, economic optimism, GDP estimate, and jolts and red book. Okay. Although you do have housing stats out of Canada again, it's not going to be any major market moving uh, data point. For now, be sure to visit CFDs.com for your trading needs. Goodbye now.